Hi everyone and welcome to my channel with Snake River Custom Design where we discuss and learn all things craft from everything sublimation, vinyl, design software, tips and tricks and so much more. Before we begin, be sure to hit that like button. Also, be sure to subscribe and also hit those notification buttons so you don't miss out on all the content that I'll be posting three, four, even five times, five days a week. Now let's just jump right in. In these next few segments, over the next few weeks, we're going to be focusing on sublimation. Um, little tricks, things you might not know about, and all over sublimation. Today's we are going to be work working on how to sublimate large images onto a 1616 sequin pillow. Um, I have the Epson 2720. So if you have that one too, you'll know that all you can print for size is the eight and a half by 11. That's not gonna look so pretty on a 16 by 16 pillow. This is great for doing large blankets, which we're gonna dive into tomorrow. Um, but today we're doing a large sequin pillow. I'm gonna show you how to put it into the design software, use post eraser to put it in four images. We can. You'll have four pieces of paper, you'll stick it in the program, and get one large image. And this looks so much better. And you can go as large as you want, but I recommend going just as large as your heat press is. Um, and that's what we're going to do for now. Today we're going to be working on a 16 by 24 heat press. Although this image that I did here will fit on a 12 by 15 heat press, if that's what you have. Um, let's get right into it and let's go over to the design software. Okay, next, what you'll want to do is go to Post Eraser, download it. It is a free software and it is amazing. I find this to be a very simple way to print out four, five, even six images, more than that, however picture, large of a picture you want to make. Once you have it downloaded, open the program as you do here. You will click this to upload your photo, and which I've already done. Then you'll click Next. Oh, let me go back. You will want to click in Settings and change it to how you would like it. I have it in inches. I like to do that because I measure things out in inches here. Then you'll click Next. Now you're going to put in, this would be standard, and it would change it. I always change it to custom because you want it to be the image that the size that you, you're needing for your blank. I have this one in at 15 and by 15. Click Next. Let me make sure my, in okay, your image should show up. There it is. If it doesn't keep going in the software, it will print out properly. It's just, I was trying to give you an idea. Of course, while I'm recording, it won't do it. Okay, I like to click bottom right. Now, this is where your corners are going to align, and I'll show you why with how I cut it. You'll click next. And there it is. Now you'll see where your lines are. It's going to cut it into four images like that on four pages. All right, then you would click next. Okay, now um, this says launch the PDF in the application. I don't use that. The reason being, I click that off, is because... I need to print with ICC profiles. Um, if you don't know what ICC profiles are, um, my ink, like I use Printer Jack's ink, and if I go to Printer Jack's website, I can put in my email address, and they will email me an ICC profile. Now, what those ICC profiles do, they make it so you can have the cleanest printing image as possible. Without those ICC profiles, your image can look brown, green, 
Uh, they just don't look right. I want it to be as crisp as possible. So what I do is I open it up in Photoshop and I always print from Photoshop. Um, I believe there are some other softwares that you can load the ICC profiles in, but I find Photoshop looks the best, even though I am not, I was not a fan of learning Photoshop. It can be diff difficult, but YouTube videos do wonders. So after that, I've now I've already got mine printed out, but you would just click the save button. And now what that's going to do is it's going to save it all in four different photos. Now, to make this simple, why it's so easy in Photoshop, all you're going to do is open Photoshop, and you're going to hold down the shift and open, or you're, you're going to end up opening all of them. It's going to have all four. You don't have to do anything to it except click on the image. You'll have four different tabs on your Photoshop, and you're just going to print each one. They are going. This program has already saved it to where it's just how you need it. And then... After we do that, you're going to end up having four sheets. And these four sheets are all going to have an image. Now the left, left corner, you're going to cut this way up to the image and this way. Do not cut this side. The only thing that you're going to cut is this one and this one. And on this one, the only the bottom one, because this is going to overlap on here, and these will overlap on the bottom. Down here on the two bottom sheets, which is his shirts, let me zoom that out. It's the bottom parts of his shirts right here. What you're going to end up doing, if you've noticed, let me try to get this close. See how I've overlapped? You line it up, and you just tape it. Same with down here, and then you take the two portions, move them down, and tape it. You'll tape them on the sides, and then turn it around, and you'll tape the back. Really simple. It seems hard, like if you're going to be able to get it lined up easy. No, it is not. The trick to it is always follow the bottom border. You're going to want those to line up perfectly, those to line up perfectly, those, and the top. If you get all of those, then you focus on certain things of the photo, such as the brim of the hat, or the lines. And these will overlap, so you can see the top photo and the bottom photo and know where to line it up. That's what I think makes it so simple of a process. Once you have it all taped together, just like that. Now, the only thing that you have to focus on is do not let any white show. You're going to want to cut off, not leaving a gap. It's okay to overlap it. Some of these last ones that I cut off, I can show you. It, it's better to cut off a little too much than not at all. There is plenty of room. But from what I have here, let's see if you can see, I just cut it down about that far. If you get more, even like that much more, it's okay. You have plenty to work with still. Then you get the image together, and you will not be able to tell that you have taken four images to make a giant one. And I like to add, you can print it out at the same time, but I don't like to try to piece together the words, so I go ahead and print out words. Always remember, when you're doing sublimation, to mirror your image, because you will be laying it down backwards, including your letters. Um, part of setting up my profile in Photoshop and your printer settings, I always have it selected to mirror image, so I don't have to remember it. It always just does it for me. And that's great because I am so forgetful. <laughs> so, moving right along. Now you'll just fire up your heat press. I'll get moved down here to the heat press. Okay, now I've moved over to the heat press here. Now this one's an e-photo ink. I absolutely love it. It's very durable. It 
a little squeaky, but it is very sturdy. I also have the 12 by 15 that I purchased off of Amazon. Um, it's, it was the eight in one. It is all right. I'm just not a fan of it. Um, as far as the durability. So mainly what I use that is I use the, the mug presses and I press everything that way. And I usually use this for most of my larger projects. Now what you'll want to do is insert cardstock. Reason being is you don't want an image bleeding through. Now the back of this one is blue, so I really wouldn't have much of a problem with that. But the other ones that I were doing, it was white on the back. You'll want to make sure to lay all your sequences down flat if, if you've got little ones, if you can see here, that stick up a little bit, you'll definitely want to put it on the heat press and warm it up just as you would anything else and hold it down for a good 30 seconds is what I normally do. Now, when you set this on the heat press, Always set down to where your sequences are coming down. That way, when you have the image, you brush up with the sequences, and it just seems to do a whole lot better without letting the image show through. And that's just my preference. But I've already heated this up, and I've already pressed it and made things flat on it. What you'll want to do is line your image up. I usually do this over here, but I don't want to move the camera again. And you're just gonna to wanna to make it as straight as possible. You're gonna use your tape, tape everything on, and I'll go ahead and do that and we'll be back. Okay, now I have my heat press set to 400. I, am, I always suggest, especially when you're pressing sequins, so don't press it un under 395. You'll want to keep the temperature as close to 400 as you possibly can. Now, as you can see, I've got it all taped, taped down really good. You want to tape it really good because as the gases release on this one, for some reason, the sequin ones, they want to pop up more. And you'll see what I'm talking about after I press it. Now I've got the letters. Make sure you have it lined up just so perfectly that your heat press is going to get everything on there. Now, I always use butcher paper. Um, don't ever use Teflon. It's great for vinyl, but I would not use it on sublimation because it traps moisture and it doesn't let the gases escape. So sometimes it can ghost your image. So it's just a no-no. Get lots of butcher paper. I go on Amazon myself. I've used most of the roll. It's time to order again, but these rolls come in very big rolls and you're going to need a lot of it. You're always going to be using this and you need to have a layer on bottom and on top. And it's fairly inexpensive. One thing you'll get to know about me is I like cheap. I like budgets, but I like quality at the same time. So I hunt those and I will always be sure to let you know what those are. Okay, we're ready to go down. Oh, see, I need to make sure I have it all the way on there. Now, it's just going to count down from 60 seconds. And like I was saying before, um, try to, you should try to keep your image the size of your heat press. Um, a lot of people are worried that the Epson, especially that the 2720, I love it. It's great. Um, I've got a sawgrass, but I, I use the Epson constantly. Um, they think that it's going to be the first thing to upgrade is to get larger prints. I find using post eraser, it's just as quick and I can have the exact, exact size that I want. It's not that the, the step up even prints that much bigger anyway. Um, I'd rather invest into a larger heat press. That's what you're going to end up using the most. And your images are reliable completely on this. 
there are some tricks that I can show you into doing full images. One full image on a giant blanket, but that's for another video. All right. Now, see, this is what I was talking about when it, when it rises. Now, that's the gases being released from the ink. So I try to get these pulled off fairly quick. So I'm going to pull it over here on the table. Now that I have it brought over here, yes, I like to pull it off when it's warm. If not, sometimes when it raises on these sequins, it will go if it's not. And there you have it. Still quite a bit of ink in it, but you could press it longer if you're wanting a darker image. I particularly don't. Not when it comes to sequin pillows, because I do not like it to the image to show through from the other sequences, especially if you're working with a lighter color sequence. This is blue, which you're not going to see any of that. But that's how you take and make one large image. Now with these pillows, I usually offer the customers... Um, to either put a pillow insert in it or a polyfill or if they want to keep the cost down um, Like this customer is doing Just the pillowcase and they can put their own insert in um, They come to me shipped just in the pillowcase form. I do buy in bulk and So in that turn I try to keep the cost down for the customer just as possibly much as I can And here you have it Thanks for tuning in, guys. Tune in tomorrow, and we're going to be working on a sublimation panel picture blanket for a customer. And I'm going to show you some tips on how to keep all of the images working correctly on that, because I found there can be ghosting on fleece if not done correctly. But thank you for tuning in. And remember, be sure to like, subscribe. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you again tomorrow.